good evening everybody welcome back to simple art for adults my name is Erin and this marks part two of our color along in Johanna's Christmas uh, we have been working on the ornaments and in our first session we went over how to choose the different colors and we also worked on the very first ornament which I think turned out rather nicely we did bump into a little bit of trouble when it came to choosing our colors um, however, the lovely Beth in the Facebook group, who is also one of my dear moderators, who helps me keep things under control in that wild and crazy bunch, <laughs> that sarcasm, helped me come up with some combinations. So, um, for today, we are going to be using um, the Tuscan Red combination, but instead of the sepia, we are going to be using um, Dark Umber instead. So, it'll go Burnt Ochre. Tuscan red and then dark umber and that does look very nice and we will also be using the um, The peach combination which consists of beige peach and burnt ochre So that is what we are going to be doing today um, I would like to color I believe this ornament with those colors um, I did have some other questions for you guys for this one and this one do you guys think that these need to be left hollow and part of the background? So like these little spaces back here and in this one as well, like it's just going to be like the frame and then the little swirls and the rest is empty. Or should we color it in completely like it's a solid ornament? I do want to ask you guys what you think. This one I think would look especially cute if we just left it alone. This one might be, I don't know. I don't know what to do. So we'll take a vote again. You guys were really awesome the last time we did this and, and gave some really good input. So I'm actually really excited to hear what you guys have to say. So um, for this ornament, I think what I want to do is we're going to do the, the back of the ornament um, in the darker colors. And then the little shell looky swirly thingies we're going to do um, in the peach set of colors because we already have one ornament over here that's done in um, the beige and peach and so I don't kind of I really don't really want it to overwhelm the whole top row so to get started we're going to need burnt ochre which is PC 943 Tuscan red which is PC 937 and dark umber which is PC 947 um, as usual I am going to take my lightest color for the combination which is going to be burnt ochre and I am just very lightly going to go over the whole area. I've been a bit of a sloppy colorist today. I don't know why that is. So I'm just going to be very careful around the little swirls here. I may have actually have to try to hold the pencil up a little closer. It gives me a little bit more control in the tight areas. Per someone's suggestion in the YouTube comments, I have shifted my lamp around to the other side. So hopefully that means you guys are going to get less shadows and you'll be able to see more of what I'm doing at all times. It's going to take some getting used to. I had to move a couple things on my desk to make that happen, but hopefully it's going to be well worth it. And if I do get into the swirls a little bit, I won't cry. I'll just get my eraser out momentarily and I'll go in and clean it up. So I hope everyone has had a wonderful day so far today. It is Tuesday now. And it has been probably the world's most craziest day for me today. <laughs> um, I've had many people ask me for a mailing address. Um, and so, and I have given a couple people that, that I feel are, you know, that are trustworthy my mailing address and I've had no issues and I have received some happy mail and I do thank all of you um, who have sent me happy mail. But for safety's sake, I thought it would probably be a better option to go and get myself a post office box so I went to the post office uh, actually the whole process started out this morning on the internet 
I got online and went to the United States Postal Service website to try to figure out how much it's going to cost for a small box because it doesn't matter how big of a box I get, the packages probably won't fit in there. There's and so like even if I got let's say like a coloring book and it's more than 13 inches long, it's not going to go in the in the uh, box. So it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me really to go with a giant box when things still aren't going to fit in it anyway. So I just wanted to get a small one. So I chose a small post office box and um, it asked me a bunch of questions, which, you know, I kind of expected. So I answered the bunch of questions and guys, I'm going in now with Tuscan Red um, and out here toward the middle. I'm kind of I'm starting away from the middle, the very, very light touch, about as light as I can get it. And then I'm bringing it down uh, out to the outside of the ornament. That's how I'm doing this. So anyway. So I started the process online. Um, I paid for the post office box for three months and set up recurring payments. I printed out my receipt. I printed out the application that you have to fill out because they have to verify your identity and all that all that jazz, which is fine. I, I completely understand. And so then I took everything that they told me to take to the post office. So I went in there with my completed application, with my receipt for my payment. Uh, my driver's license and my um, the registration for my car because they had to have a photo ID and a non photo ID so I had all those things and I took them all in there and the lady goes to her computer and she starts typing everything in and then she gets to the end and she's like well that'll be you know $31 I think is what it was for the three months and I said well here's my receipt I've already I paid for it online it told me to just bring you my application and come get my keys and she said, well, we don't have any record that you've paid for it. And I said, well, I have my receipt right here that I printed out. It says I paid for it. And she's, she's basically like, well, I can't help you because we can't, we can't find you in the system. So there's really nothing I can do. So here I am stuck with, you know, this receipt that says I paid and no post office box. So at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated. Now, I live in a little bitty town, so my local post office is only open until, like, I don't know. It's open. It opens up at 1230 in the afternoon, and it closes at 4. So what I did was I packed up, and I went to the next biggest town to me, which is Tall City, Indiana, which is still a, a tiny little town. I went into their post office. So the lady there does a little bit more research and comes to find out that she thinks that somehow the website I got into to make my payment was some kind of a spoof website. Like it really wasn't the USPS website and that I paid some complete stranger for a post office box that I was never going to get. So then I had to turn around and call the bank and tell them to put a, to stop the payment and uh, because it was potential fraud and all kinds of nonsense. And I think the thing that gets me is why the lady at the first post office here in town couldn't tell me that. Like, she acted like she didn't know anything at all. And the other lady at the other post office told me that she called her and let her know that it was potential fraud. So she doesn't, she didn't really understand what the issue was. Alright, so now I have dark umber. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it on the very, very outside of the ornament. So we're going to go uh, starting about here with a very, very light touch and then bringing it in to the very edge. So all in all today, it took me a good three and a half hours to get myself a post office box. And I finally did. So, you know, at least I made some progress in that. I've also mentioned in my Facebook group that there's a little project I'd really love to start. And anybody who uh, wants to help me do this is more than welcome. Um, my boyfriend a couple years ago got me probably the world's biggest cork board. So it's just a big cork board that you hang things on with push pins. And you know, I keep, you know, I hang bills or and stuff on it, but it's just so big that whatever I hang on there just looks ridiculous because it's so huge. So I think something fun to do would be to hang uh, colored images from my group, from my Facebook group and, you know, YouTube viewers and whatnot on that cork board. So I have included my post office box. It's in the description. 
if you guys are interested in coloring an image or a postcard or a bookmark or an anything and you would like me to hang it on my uh, cork board please feel free to send it I will definitely put it on there and whenever it starts to fill up I will definitely share pictures with you guys both on YouTube and on uh, in the Facebook group I think it'll be a really cool project it'll be like a like a dynamic coloring scrapbook for simple art for adults I think it'll be a lot of fun so I'm really really excited about it uh, don't feel obligated by any means don't feel obligated that you have to color something and send it in I, that's not what I'm that's not what I'm getting at um, if I get too many to where like if like if I get to the point where they won't fit on my cork board what I plan to do is just like rotate them out like I'll have some in the front for a while and then I'll move those out of the way and I'll put others in the front for a while uh, just so everybody gets their 15 minutes of fame and I have something pretty to look at you guys have to remember I spend like 10 to 12 hours a day at my desk between work and YouTube so um, the pretty view will definitely make my day it'll definitely make things happier for me so I'm pretty excited about it so I've got some smudge happening for whatever reason we're gonna take that away sorry for the noise apparently there was some dust left over on my uh, on my pencil whenever I sharpened it and that does happen from time to time with Prismacolors you need to kind of wipe them off at the tip after you sharpen them or else you're likely to get some of that the dust likes to hang on after sharpening all right, let me go around this edge. This is where the darkest part of it's going to be, is right around the edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and darken that in. My son is in the living room. My daughter came out of her room just now talking really loudly and my son's like, shh, mom's making a video. Be quiet. It's funny. I think most kids would be embarrassed to have like, or kids my age would be embarrassed if their parent was a YouTuber. And my kids are um, 15, 13, and 11. They think it's cool that mom's a YouTuber. Like, my mom's a YouTuber. <laughs> I, this is not something that I ever, ever thought that I would ever do. I'm just being, you know, completely honest with you guys. I never saw myself making YouTube videos. I have social anxiety, so it's not, um, not my first choice of activities. But somehow it is, it's a, it's, it's a fun thing. I enjoy doing it a whole lot. I really do. Getting around these little swirls, I'm telling you. Proving difficult. So I'm using a, I'm back with a Tuscan Red now. A little bit more pressure than before. Not a whole lot, just like a medium pressure. Oh, you guys came and see what I'm doing. I'm just over here coloring, talking, moving stuff out of the way. Now, as I get up closer to here, I'm lightening it up. And I'm going to leave, like, the last, the first time that I went over with the Tuscan Red, I'm going to leave it even lighter than the rest. Because this is going to help me blend my colors in. And you guys will notice I'm even going over the um, the umber with the Tuscan Red. Because 
we don't want it to look, you know, like brown. We just want to deepen up that red. My stomach is growling. I know what I'm doing when I finish this ornament. I'm going to go get some food. The children unanimously voted for pizza, and I feel terrible. They had taquitos yesterday, which is like, you know, not home-cooked food. Today they wanted pizza, which I guess, you know, I guess you, you could always do worse than pizza when it comes to, you know, nutritious food, because they actually eat vegetables on their pizza. I know a lot of kids don't. Mine do. Um, but you know, still. So tomorrow, mom's cooking something. I don't know what mom's cooking. <laughs> but something. Something good. Okay, now I'm coming back in with the, um, the burnt ochre. And I'm taking it back into that Tuscan red just a little. Again, with about medium pressure. I'm not pushing down too hard. Um, depending on the quality of the blend here, I may choose to go in with my um, blender pencil. These colors are quite a bit different from each other. Um, so it may be tough to blend with just the pencil. I am going to try my best though. Yes, in case you're new to my channel and you're new to watching me color on a uh, color tube, I move my book. I can't do like the rest of these ladies and, and be perfectly still when I color. Um, I will make a mess. So I move my book around when I color if it makes you dizzy or something, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I'm hoping that you'll take mercy on my poor, pitiful, book-moving soul. <laughs> my children are in there breaking things now, it would sound like. Alright, so far so good. I think that's coming out just fine. It looks like a, almost like a chestnut or something maybe. I'm not sure what it... So now we're going back over with the Tuscan Red. And I am being paged, ladies and gentlemen. If you will excuse me for a moment, I will come back. And we will finish this coloring of this ornament momentarily. Hi guys, sorry about the interruption there. I did have to go tend to a little bit of business. And we did have some exciting news that happened in the meantime. So it took me a little bit longer to get back than I thought it was going to take. But anyway, so let's get back to work on our little ornament that we have going here. Um, so what we've got is we've got the... Um, the dark umber along the very outside and we've got the Tuscan red more in the middle and in the very center for the highlight we have the burnt ochre. So basically at this point we have all our layers down, we have all the colors in there we want. So I'm just going to go back through one more time and darken everything up. I'm going to start with the dark umber and I'm just going to come in around the edges and at this point I'm going to give it some pressure almost burnishing the paper but not quite just in case I decide I need some more one more layer we, I want to give myself that capability so this is going to be just right up against the edge
All right. Well, I got some smear happening. Some of the Prisma colors do seem to do that a little worse than others. But I tend to get used to it over time. So, nothing I can't just erase right off the page if I need to. Alright, so that's it for the umber, or the dark umber. Then I'm going to come back with my Tuscan Red, and we're going to go right back into it over the whole entire thing, because remember, this Tuscan Red is supposed to be our main color for this ornament. So we don't want the other two colors to take over. I'm just going to pull a little bit out toward the center. I'm notorious for getting outside the lines, guys. That's why I have my eraser handy all the time. Don't leave home without it. So back over everything with the Tuscan Red, except for the very center. We just want to leave that very center, that umber color, because if we go over it, we're going to darken it up, and we don't want that. We want it to stay nice and light. So we're just pulling the Tuscan Red into the middle just a little. Just so we can get that seamless blend. And then back over here on this side. And again, just very, very lightly. The trick to this is adjusting your pressure depending on where, where you are. So back here I'm heavy pressure. And then as I start to move out toward the lighter part of the ornament, I'm lightening my pressure and I'm stopping to look to see how, what the transition's looking like, whether I need to add more color, more pressure, less pressure. Filling in all the white space. Back here at this side of the page, we're, we're pretty well burnishing because this is finished. These are the colors that we want for this part of the ornament. We want these nice, dark, rich colors. Okay, so now all we have left is the highlight in the center, which is going to be the burnt ochre. We're going to start back in the Tuscan Red just a little bit. And we're going to mix these colors up. We're going to blend them all together. And we are going to burnish at this point. It does not appear that I'm going to need to pull out a blender pencil. It looks like the colors are managing to mix fairly well. And that color combination turned out to be very, very, very lovely. So thank you, Beth, for taking the time to go through and swatch them all out to see what looked best. I'm going to have to agree. This one turned out very, very well. I just did the no-no. I blew on it. All right, let me get the smears off. And the eraser, the only bad thing about this eraser is it sticks to the paper. All right. So I'm going to clean up my edges here. And it is very noisy. I apologize. All 
I may be stuck with just a little bit of this red in the swirls, but it's not the end of the world. All right, so now that we're finished with these colors, we are moving on to the peach combination. So we are going to leave uh, the burnt ochre out because we are going to need that. And we are also going to need our peach and our beige. So what I think I would like to do is reserve the lightest color for these. So I don't think I want to put any of the beige in the swirls. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the little swirls with the peach. Just a light pressure just to get the color in. And we'll even do the one that's up next to the little seashell looking doodads, thingamabobs, whatchamajigs. <laughs> And we'll get this one up here. And then with the umber, I'm going to come in just around the edges like we did with everything else and just start out uh, darker toward the back of the ornament and then lighter toward the front. Or from the edge to the center, I suppose I should say. Remember to lighten your pressure as you get toward the center so that you can blend everything together. I'm actually going to sharpen this up so I get a little bit better coverage. All right, now that that's finished, I'm gonna go back in here. Now we can apply a little bit of heavy pressure back toward the edge, but just lighten it up as you go up. All right, now we'll take our peach and we'll use a moderate to heavy pressure and we'll just join those two colors together right there in the middle. And just applying pressure to the pencil is all it's gonna to take to blend them together. You're not gonna to need any tools or any solvents, just applying the pressure And there we have our swirls. <sighs> Trying to blow the eraser junk off so I don't smear it anymore. Okay, um, so because our beige is going to be our highlight color for our peach, we're going to go ahead with our beige now. And we're going to fill in the little fans. And again, this is just very light pressure. off center from the camera. Let me scoot that over a little. All right. Now we're going to take our peach and we're going to go about two thirds of the way up. We're going to start with a very, very, very light pressure right here. So in this area, we're using a very light pressure. We're going to leave just the tips, just a couple millimeters of the beige. And then we're going to color everything else in the peach. We're going to do the same here. Start with a very light pressure, leaving just a, 
just a little line of the beige, just enough that we'll have a highlight, and everything else in the peach. Remember that you want lighter pressure up toward this end so that when we go in and blend, we don't have that line. We don't want to have a visible blending line. Try to move my hand back so you guys can see what I'm doing here. All right. Last but not least, our dark color that we chose for the peach is once again the burnt ochre. So we're just going to do very lightly. We're going to do just down at the very bottom of that. Uh, it looks like a seashell to me. I know that's probably not what it is, but that's what it looks like. So we're going to do very lightly, just only about this much. That's about it. And we're going to carry it, carry it up just a tiny little bit. And do this one next. Very light pressure, but you can go darker down into the little, where it all comes together, you can go a little darker. And like, make this one stand out just a little bit more. There we go, a little bit darker down in that little corner. And then the same up here. So it would help if I moved so you guys could see it. Very light pressure. Remember like when we did our last tutorial, we do the very light pressure for the first layer because we want to see where our colors are going to be placed. We want to see what we need to do to straighten everything back out again. So now I'm going to use peach again. And I'm going to, starting in the, um, at the tip where we did the ochre, or I'm sorry, the umber, we're going to pull the peach out just a little bit. We're going to go over everything except for a highlighted area, being very careful to use a light hand when we get toward the tip. Because again, that's where our beige is going to go. And we want to keep that beige highlight there. Because that's what's going to give us our gradient. So light pressure here, gradually getting a little heavier. All right, now down toward the corner, just at the tip, you can start to burnish it out just a little down in that area. Don't take it too far because you still have some blending to do with the last two colors. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull this out and up just a little tiny bit leaving just the smallest amount left for the beige. All right. Now we're going to take our beige and we're going to start at the tip. We're going to use a heavy pressure. We're going to mix it all together. Starting at the tip, bring it down, mix it all together for each little section. And this is what's going to give you your gradient and your seamless blend. <sighs> Got to blow on the book. <laughs> okay, same for this. Start at the very edge. Heavy pressure, go down. Follow the curve of the little seashell. Go back over everything you've done. All the way down to the corner. Alright, last one.
starting at the edge and carrying the color all the way down. And there you have it. There's our second ornament. Let me zoom out so you can see it in comparison. It looks a little different when it's way up close. But when you back out and you look at it like this, it looks like it's darker around the back side. And then it looks like the light's shining right on it, which is exactly what we wanted. And that's why we put the dark colors all down around the edges, even when we did the other little bits. Because this way it gives it a rounded appearance. It makes it appear like it's really a globe. So that the light's hitting it in the way that we want it to hit to make it look 3D and realistic. So at this point, all we have left to do is the... Uh, the top um, so we could use gel pens which is what I'm going to do because I like to add some sparkle again I don't have my gel pens out because I'm never prepared but I do think I want to go for some gold so let's see what we can come up with we have a metallic gold Mm, I'm not sure that's like a metallic silver or a glitter silver. I'm looking for a glitter gold. If I have one somewhere. Let's try this. It may be too yellow, but we'll try it. Give it a little test. Yeah, it's a little more yellow than I think I'd really like. Oh, the lost art of choosing gel pens for coloring pages, guys. That's like brown. I don't want brown. Let's try. Let's see how orange this one is. That one looks like a really yellow gold. What about this? Like a brown you guys are probably like at home right now watching me on YouTube like it's right there Aaron it's right in front of your face get that one right there you're looking at it pick it up pick it up no. <laughs> We're just going to do the orangey one, because I think I like that one the best out of all of them. And I am also going to grab um, the metallic silver. It's so loud. I'm sorry, guys. Actually, I'm going to grab the lighter silver. This is a gold, I believe. However, it's not glitter. It's just metallic. And I'm not really... I mean, the metallics in here are okay, but I'm not a huge fan. I, let's, let's try it anyway, because this is too orange. Me and my spur of the moment decisions. Ah, throw it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do this in silver and gold. We're going to, I'm going to do the big part. Hello there everybody, we're having some camera technical difficulties today, so I am trying to get everything all resolved here so we can finish coloring this picture. My camera does not want to stop moving. Alright, so now we're zoomed all back in on the um, bandit. That's enough, stop. My dog's back here acting up. So now we're all zoomed back in on the ornament. And I have a gold gel pen and I am going to just do the top. And now these are the metallic gel pens from Cali Art. I like their glitter gel pens a lot. The metallic ones, I'm not such a tremendous fan of. They feel almost too scratchy to use these correctly. Don't push down on your paper. If you have a gel pen that doesn't seem like it's functioning properly, just let it kind of glide over the paper. Don't push it down at all. It makes it work better. It's like if you push too hard on the little ball that's down in there, it won't come out correctly. I guess you guys can't really see what I'm doing. My hand's in the way. It's hard to color 
on video with a gel pen because you have to hold it upright to get the gel to come out properly and then you can't see what I'm doing. And there's our gold for this ornament. Now I am very, very carefully going to take the silver metallic. I'm going to not touch anything because it's still wet and it will be for a while. And I'm going to go in and do these little dots. And this little ring. Maybe. Again, I have to hold it straight up, so I'm sorry if you can't see. It won't come out if I don't hold it just right. And that's that. So that is our other ornament. Let me see if I can fix the camera. Ooh, that's too far. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to make you all dizzy trying to get the camera to stand still. So there's our second ornament complete. So we have two ornaments finished now. This one I think I like the best. I really, really, really like the way those colors came together to make it look, I don't know, it looks elegant. It looks like, have you ever seen the Christmas trees where there are only like two or three different types of ornaments on them? So it looks like you'd have a Christmas tree that would have ornaments like this and then ornaments that are silver glitter and that's it. Like, and white lights. I would like to have some of those on my tree. This one's cute too, don't get me wrong, but nah, I think it's just there to kind of help us finish our color scheme more than anything. I like this one a lot better. I hope you guys are having fun following along with this uh, little Christmas color along, and I'll be doing another one probably sometime before Sunday. Um, I'm probably just going to do them sporadically and also on our Sunday Funday color and chats because, you know, it, it seems like, it seems almost like too much pressure to try to get two done at the same time <laughs> so we'll just do them sporadically here and there and you guys can always just come back and follow them whenever you're ready um i do have some questions about these two do you want to leave these hollow or do you want to color them like they're solid and when i say hollow like around in these swirls do you think we should color that or do you think we should leave that open like to the background um, and the same with this one, because it's got like that centerpiece in the very, very middle that looks like maybe there's nothing there. Um, so I'll just get your all's opinions on that and we'll see what you think. That's all I have for you today, guys. I'm really, really happy that we got to sit down and color another ornament. I was really looking forward to it. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the colors just as much as I am. I think they're really, really fun. Unfortunately, my camera hates me and it keeps turning itself off. So I am going to do some computer maintenance because I think it has something to do with the computer. And in the meantime, please feel free to subscribe, like the video, and definitely stay tuned for a huge giveaway that we're going to have coming up here within the next oh, probably three or four weeks. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. I'm holding the camera. That's why it's shaking. I do apologize. But until next time, have a good night and thank you for joining Simple Art for Adults.